In today's show, we're going to install and configure the on-premises data gateway for Power Apps. If you ever want to be able to get your on-prem SQL, SharePoint, DB2 data out into uh, on Power Apps so you can take advantage of it, you can build an app around it and connect to it, well, guess what? This is a video for you. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys. And today's show is all about getting your on-prem data and exposing it so we can access it from the cloud, right? We're gonna access it via either Power Apps or Power BI, Flow, some of the Azure services. All of those uh, different offerings use this same data connector so we don't have to you know, install this over and over again. It's one of the pure genius things Microsoft's actually done recently, right? Letting one data connector facilitate multiple products. So in this video, we're going to walk through, you know, kind of what you need to know, and then we're going to install it, and then we're going to configure it, and then we'll connect to our SQL Server database in our Power Apps to show you that it's all working, and then also to set the table because the next video is going to be about how to take um, a Power App and build a custom Power App from your SQL on-prem data, which is what I know a lot of you are actually waiting on. All right, so let's just switch over to my desktop to get started. Over here on my desktop, uh, let's talk about kind of some of the pieces of the puzzle here. So the first piece of the puzzle is this uh, virtual machine I built. So I built a new Windows Server virtual machine, and this is going to be my data gateway host, I guess, right? This is going to be the server that we're going to install the data gateway software on that's going to facilitate the connection. The nice thing is it just needs to be a simple Windows box. Um, I made it part of my domain. That's optional as well, right? It just needs to be able to get onto your network and facilitate connections. The other thing that a lot of people immediately ask for, well, what ports do I have to have open? What firewall stuff do I need to have? None. The good news is, is that this is a, a pool model, right? So the data gateway software you install in your network, it's going to just reach out every uh, very often and check and see, does Azure have anything for it to do? And then it'll pull the transaction down and then push it back out. So we don't have to open firewall ports, right? We don't have to install this in our DMZ or anything like that. It's perfectly safe sitting right here where it's at. In my case, it's a virtual machine running on my uh, local computer here. Shh, that's probably not ideal, but it's what I did. Okay, so we have this uh, virtual machine. And what we need to do, though, is we're going to jump over here to Power Apps. And so from the Power Apps home screen, you can see that uh, over here on the left, there is a gateways option. I ignored it for a long time, but there it sits. And you can see that right now I don't have any gateways. And it says, hey, you need to install one if you want one. Okay, so install a gateway. That's going to take us over here. And so I'm going to download the on-premises data gateway. Now, I always do this install or this download from my local machine, right? Because we know doing a download from your Windows server is a giant pain in the tuchus. So we don't want any of that. So that now that that's done, we're going to say show in folder. And so there's the gateway install. So I'm going to copy this. Right, minimize, minimize, and then go back over to our Windows Server, and I'll just paste it right here. That just saves you all the pain and suffering of having to deal with, um, you know, Windows not wanting to download things. So now let's walk through this install. So we're going to double-click on it, and it's going to remind you that uh, you want to do this on a computer that is not uh, going to go to sleep, right, because the data gateway can't work if this computer's asleep. Um, it'll also perform more slowly on a wireless network. You're pretty smart. You probably figured that out. Uh, there used to be a warning here also, you couldn't have it on domain controller. I'm pretty sure that's still a thing also. So that's all right. We check all those boxes. So we'll say next. Where do I want to install it? That looks good. I'm going to read the terms of use and privacy statement. Don't worry. Hit pause. I'll wait while you do it. Okay, good job. So hit install. And so this is going to install uh, for us. Now, while this is installing, a couple of things I want to talk about real quick, just so you kind of have them in your head. Uh, on connect on premises connectivity is only available or was pretty much available in all the power apps licenses but a couple there's a couple exceptions so one is if you're using office uh, 365 office business license or office enterprise e1 SKUs. neither one of those SKUs include the ability to use power app data connections um, so if you have those be careful if you have any f1 users right so you've got the office 365 f1 users they cannot um, access data via the gateway. So if you write an app and publish it with uh, you know, SQL on-prem, your F1 users cannot take advantage of the data gateway. So I know one of my customers, that'll probably be a sticking point for him because I know he'd plan on doing it, but it turns out F1 uh, users can't utilize data connections via the gateway. So watch out for that. 
All right, so I got some more nuggets, but we'll cover those in a minute. Okay, so now it says, hey, your installation is successful. You need to uh, log in and configure this thing, all right? So this is going to be your Power Apps account, right? Literally, your Power Apps account can set it up. Once you set it up, then you need to make this data connection available to everyone else. So that's my account. We'll say sign in. Now the server OS is mad at me, right? So I'm just going to add all these. So add. I didn't want to do this ahead of time because I wanted you guys to see the pain that I went through with a fresh VM. So close. It's like, oh, I failed. That's okay. We'll sign in again. And now we'll enter the password. Yep, you guys know peeking there. We'll say sign in. We'll wait a few seconds here. And so now it is set up. And so now it's like, hey, do you want to do a new on-premises data gateway? I do. And so we're going to call this uh, video gateway. Now you could say add an existing gateway cluster. So if you had a, another gateway server, what can happen is you can actually make them high availability by you, you install the first one the way we're going to show in this video. And then when you do the second one, you choose add to an existing gateway cluster and then you pick the name of this server. And then what's weird is kind of the cluster becomes just the name of the first server. But then that way, if one of those two, uh, your gateway servers are ever down, your power up data connection still keeps working. Um, it's newer functionality. I haven't messed with it a lot, but that's uh, the long story short of how I understand it all works. We also need a recovery key here. So I'm going to put in something. You guys are not going to look when I type, right? Thank you for that. Make sure we record it in a, se a separate place. I'll put a link down below to the uh, gateway reference software, right? The setting up a cluster and all that. So if you wanted to kind of go read about that, there's a link below. I don't want to get too deep into that uh, today. All right, the other thing I want to point out down here at the bottom is you can see that it's currently set to the West US uh, region. And so I can change regions. But what Power Apps did was it went out, or what the gateway did, I should say, is it went out and figured out that my account and all my services are in the West region. So it's configured this for me. Be careful, right? Because I'm actually in Cincinnati. So I'm like, wait a minute, I want to be in the East region. But my account, because of the way it was set up, was set up in the West region. If I move the gateway to work with the East region, guess what happens? I can't use this with Power Apps and Power BI because they're both in the West region. So long story short, I wouldn't mess with this unless you really specifically know what you're doing, all right? So cool, let's hit configure. And so after about 10 seconds that all got done, you can see, look here, it's ready for Power Apps and Flow. It's ready for Power BI. If I want to go make it work with Logic Apps or Azure Analysis Services, I got to go create a gateway, but it's all up and running. Uh, a couple things here, let's talk about this while we're in here though. You want to make sure that, you know, A, that everything's ready. You want to keep an eye on your version. A lot of times if you find out, you know, your gateway's working, it's working, it's working, and it stops working one day, what happens is if sometimes if the gateway software gets updated in the cloud and you haven't updated the version of the gateway software running on your gateway uh, machine here, they'll get out of whack and that's what happens. So always check your version and see if that needs updated. There's like troubleshooting step one, you know, if it stops working in a week. Service settings, so I can restart the gateway. Um, I can also configure the gateway service account. So the reason that you might do this, typically we leave it alone, but say for example that you're having a hard time on this diagnostics, you're like, oh wait, no, on the network, you know, you're like, check now. And you're having a hard time getting out because you are configured for a proxy server or something like that. You know, this whole connection is happening via that service account that got provisioned. And so if you haven't configured all of that, uh, through your proxy, you might need, you know, set up an account that you can configure with your proxy server to get out. Once again, not something we're going to get into, but know there's a lot of buttons here. Uh, there are some diagnostics. There's also a few PowerShell commandlets. Uh, once again, I'll leave the documentation below, so if you want to go deeper. But the good news is, is that for most of us, this all works. We are set. So if we close this out, right, now we can get off of our server. And now we'll return to our lovely browser where we all prefer to be. Let's get rid of this message. Do a refresh here. Success. We have a video gateway. Woohoo! So now let's go over here. Let's create an app from it real quick. So let's do apps. Let's say create an app. And so we could start with a blank app, but that's no fun, right? Let's hit the little arrow here. And let's do a new connection. And if we scroll down through the connections, I'm going to do one to SQL Server. And so now I say, hey, you want to connect directly to a Cloud Services SQL Server? Nope, I want to do it to on-premises data gateway. Um, and so connect directly, right? That would most likely be if you're using, you know, Azure uh, databases. So Azure SQL, yeah, Azure SQL as a service. That's what you'd be using there. All right, so what is my SQL server name here? Let me grab this from over here. It is that. 
My SQL database is a very fancy name of test one. The authentication type, I set mine up to use a SA account, but you can definitely do Windows authentication as well. So that all looks good. What gateway, I only have one, so that's easy enough. So I'll say create. Once again, about 10 seconds of waiting and boom. Let's choose a data set. Well, I'll choose a default data set. There's my tables, so let's use table one and say connect. And then now Power Apps is doing its magic. It's going to make us our three um, screen app right from our data. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, if you only get two screens, let's skip this real quick, um, right? If it doesn't give you the edit or the create new screen, which is what happened to me a bunch and made me shake my fist in anger a lot, um, what it is is your SQL Server database has to have a primary key, right? An actual official in SQL Server, I went and took one of the columns and made it a primary key. If you don't, then it can still display the data, but it can't edit records or write back to them. So that was one of the big issues I had. But you can see, you know, we hit preview, fully functional app. This is coming out of, here's my SQL database. Um, look at this, Shane Boss, salary of 10,000 whole dollars. Woo, I'm rich. Um, so that is all feeding my app, right? If I click on this one, there's more details. You can see I don't have a picture. I do have a higher date. All the data is there. All right, so I think it's a quick enough tour of the app. So let's uh, just do a quick uh, overview. So let's close out of this. And let's go take a look at some of the data connection settings that you need to worry about. So we go over here, Microsoft Power Apps, and then under Gateways now, right, we've got our video gateway. We'll keep closing this silly thing. But if you click on this guy, here you can see the uh, contact info, the status is live, so it's all working. For users, you need to share this with everyone, right? So add everyone in my org, and then we're just going to give them the ability to use it, and then what they can connect to. Now, you could get in this fancy scenarios where we only shared, you know, the... Uh, MySQL connection with those silly d database guys over in the corner or something like that. But for right now, it's just easier to share with the whole org. They all can use this gateway. So we'll do that and save. So now then when I publish my app out, they'll all be able to consume it, except for those F1 users, remember that. So connections, you know, you can just check the pieces here so we can edit, share, delete. Um, the reason I point this out though is because over here um, also, you know, if while you're testing, you build a few of these and you're like, oh man, I don't like what I did here, right? The big old remove icon. So what you would do is you come in, you remove the gateway, that'll get it out of Power Apps, and then you can go down to your Windows server. You can either uninstall it, or in the case of what I did with the VM, was I said, revert to the previous snapshot and got myself right back so I could kind of do this over and over again. But either way, this remove button is the, uh, the key thing for you. On your Windows server, where's my Windows server at right here? On the start button now, You've got an on-premises data gateway, and so this would get you back to the configuration screen that we talked about earlier. And just remember that you need to sign in to kind of be able to make any of the changes, right? So you would sign in with your same account you did for the install. But I think that gives you the kind of the overview, the nuts and the bolts. Um, remember, there's no firewall ports to open. I know that question keeps coming up. There's none. But this works. You saw everything I had to do to make all this fun stuff happen. So pretty cool, huh? All right. So then... Hopefully this gives us that foundation right now you can connect. And so in the next video, we'll actually dive in and start uh, making and customizing a SQL Server database power apps app. I think I said all those words in right order. Either way. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions about what we did today, hit me in the comments below on the Power App community, you know, Twitter, send me a carrier pigeon. It doesn't matter. Cool? All right. Well, thanks and have a great day. <laughs> Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the bold zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these power app videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.